never thought I'd be a professor. And I never thought I'd be an engineer, let alone study the brain. And it wasn't because I didn't think I could be an engineer or that I was discouraged from being an engineer. I just always followed the opportunities that presented themselves that I'd earned by doing well in school and that I found to be interesting. I was driven by my curiosity. So now, yes, I'm a professor at UCF, uh, and I direct the brain lab where we're trying to understand how the brain and the muscles work together to allow us to move. If we're walking, it just happens for most of us, right? If we're not injured, or we don't have a medical condition, we don't have to think about how to walk. We don't have to think about where we place our feet. If we can go for a hike in the mountains, well, maybe not in Florida, it is the flattest state, but we can enjoy the scenery and have a conversation. I take my dog Cider for a walk every night, and I will admit I tend to read the news on my phone. And so I'm somehow able to walk around my neighborhood and follow this windy path, and I don't really have to think about it. And sometimes I rarely look up, so I'm amazed that I don't fall down and injure myself. So how does the body do this? How does the brain do all of this? We as humans have been able to look at brain activity, uh, electrical brain activity, for nearly a century now. So Dr. Hans Berger in 1924 was the first person to be able to look at human encephalography signals or EEG signals. And the story goes that when he was in the military, he had an accident, he got thrown off of his horse, and he nearly died. And his sister, who was hundreds of miles away, had this intense feeling that something really bad happened to him. And she asked their father to send a telegram, and they normally never did that. And so for Dr. Berger, this was a really powerful experience, this mental telepathy experience that he experienced with his sister. And he was really curious about it and driven to try to understand how that could happen. So after a lot of work, it took many years for him to be able to record an electrical signal from the scalp uh, that represented the brain activity. And so this first signal, often called alpha waves, is shown in that top waveform. And it is pretty readily seen when we close our eyes. Thing is that in 1924 he saw this waveform, but because he had doubt, it took him five years before he actually published uh, his work. And when he published the work, his colleagues were also very skeptical because it's pretty easy to record an electrical artifact. So they didn't believe that he was actually recording something from the brain. These days the technology is a lot better and uh, you could, if you wanted to, measure these brain waves with just a couple of electrodes and an app on your phone. So in my lab, I have more than a couple of electrodes. I have 128 and can show what these brain waves look like. So uh, my student, Jin Feng, right now his eyes are open. And at this moment, he closes his eyes and you can see these little waveforms, much like the uh, waveform on the previous slide that I showed. So these are called alpha waves, and they're readily seen when the eyes are closed, and they're mostly recorded from the electrodes on the back of the head. In this video, we're gonna show you all the other stuff you can record. So like I said, it's pretty easy to record things that are not brain waves. So here, he clenches his jaw and we get this gigantic signal. And when he drops his head, we also get a large signal. So with the EEG system, we record eye blinks, jaw clenches, movements. They all create signals. So EEG is more than just brain waves. One way to avoid recording this artifact is you just try to not record it to begin with. So for a lot of EEG studies, we tend to instruct subjects to try not to blink their eyes, just stare at this dot, uh, try not to clench your jaw or talk, and keep your head still, because we need you to do those things so we can get really good signals. 
And if you try and record this activity as people are walking, then it's kind of hard. So subjects will be like, mm, okay, I'll try. But what we're really thinking is the subject is probably thinking, what? That's gonna be really hard. That's kind of ridiculous. And I'm thinking there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way for us to try to address this problem that has existed since Dr. Berger first looked at uh, brain waves using EEG. So we took a different perspective on this problem. And this is actually one of my favorite studies that I've done so far, and I refer to it as the WIG study. So in this study, we used the EEG system to not record actual EEG signals. So we didn't want to record anything from the person's body. So we put a swim cap on the head and then put a wig on to be kind of like a fake head, and then we put the electrodes over that. And by doing this, we could block the signals from the person. And so we were curious to see what this signal would look like, and we were the first to look at just movement artifact. As you can imagine, we got some interesting responses from people for trying to do this study. On one hand, we had people who said, that's clever, really cool. And on the other hand, we had other people who just didn't get it. They didn't get it, and they didn't understand why we would do it. And we could have been discouraged by this negative feedback, um, but we thought it was really important to be able to look at these signals, and we were very curious about it. So we continued, and now we have a dual recording EEG system. So now we're able to record simultaneously the movement artifact and the noise from a conductive cap, shown in black, and we can also record the, real, the normal scalp EEG signal uh, that interfaces from the person's brain. And the original intent of, to do this was so that we could uh, remove the artifact and recover a high quality brain signal. And that's great. But we think in my lab, that there's additional information that we can extract from the movement artifact. So just so you can see what this looks like. Okay. So this is, again, a video of Jim Fung clenching his jaw and moving his head. And you'll see there are some additional waveforms at the bottom. Those are the signals being recorded by our uh, outer facing electrodes that record just the artifacts. So you can see when he clenches his jaw, we don't pick anything up. I know it's really hard to see, but there are waveforms there, and those represent the movement artifacts. So we are able to record the EEG, scalp EEG and simultaneously record the artifacts. And this is only in Florida are we doing this. It's my lab and also a lab at the University of Florida. Okay, we can take these signals, and computers are really powerful these days, and we can apply machine learning, and we can actually extract the source signals. So the EEG signal is a mixture of signals from your brain, your eyes, your muscle, your heartbeat, your head movements, and by using the power of computers, we can extract these source signals. And that's really useful for studying the brain. And these artifacts, things that get in the way of looking at the brain waves can also be really interesting. And that's what my lab, what we're currently thinking about and we're curious about and we're focusing on. If a movement artifact is created by movement, then it should be a pretty good signal for trying to extract some movement characteristics. So we've been asking, can we predict walking speed? And can the movement artifact signal do a better job than the signal we would normally record from the scalp, because the signal from the scalp is everything. And our preliminary results currently show that yes, movement artifacts can predict walking speed better than the scalp EEG. So again, the movement artifacts, they're shown in the red bars with the yellow wig in it, that has no signal from the body. And teal is the, the results for the EEG signal recorded from the scalp. And I think this is a really cool result, that the movement artifacts, they are 
they contain information that can be useful. So for so long, EEG researchers, we viewed movement artifacts as being the enemy. And I think they can actually be our friend and they can provide a lot of information. Many folks will work on reading our brain waves and our thoughts. We think there's much more to read from the artifacts. So we can use the dual layer EEG system and extract the source signals and we think we can take these artifact, these artifact signals and maybe say something about when the foot hits the ground. And if we can do that, then maybe we can look at your gait patterns. Maybe we can see if you walk asymmetrically. Maybe we can use the artifact, the movement artifact signal with the muscle signal. And from that, we can see if people are turning their head. Maybe we can take the eye blink and the eye movement signal and we can predict where someone is looking. So are you looking over here or over there? Am I looking back at the screen, which I am right now? Can we see how fast eyes move there and use that information in a, use, in a beneficial way? So I basically think we can record all this data from EEG and we don't need to have a bunch of sensors. We don't need an eye tracker. I don't think we need an accelerometer. I think we can extract all this information just from EEG. So that would be really powerful, right? We could look at brain waves, we could look at movement, we can look at what the eyes are doing, uh, we can look at where the head is turning. I think we can get this all from a single system from our EEG signals. So with my team, we are working towards this and we're being curious together. So we call ourselves the brain nuts. So mechanical bolt with a little brain on top of it because we combine engineering with neuroscience. And to conclude my journey, I'd like to say, first, we should look at problems from a different perspective. EEG artifacts have been a problem that have existed ever since people tried to record electrical activity on the scalp. But we took a different perspective looking at it, and thus, we did the wig studies. And we kind of showed that in a way, in the EEG signal, the brain, the muscles, the eye movement, the heart movement, they get in the way of a movement artifact signal. So we kind of flipped the story there. Initially, our results were met with some interesting responses. They either thought it was cool, which was great, or they thought it was the dumbest thing that you could do. But we didn't let them discourage us from being curious. And last, it takes a team, so be curious together. So thanks for listening and being curious together with me.